550 meters right behind me in this beautiful Y Street, you're going to have a direct link between the stadium where Paul once came. There was a huge riot in the book of Acts chapter 19, and that road leads all the way to the harbor, one of the wonders of the ancient world. As you can see, the width of the road, and on the side you have uh, uh, stores, people greeting. It's a way of merchandising and having people enjoy the, 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 the beauty of this beautiful city. This city was one of the most important cities of the ancient Asia Minor Greco-Roman world. Neocoros, one of the temple keepers in the book of Acts, talks about the temple keepers. This is the place where Paul came. This is where he walked. More than likely, he would have walked all through this place in order to get to where we're going next. So please understand that when you read the New Testament, it's full of imagery, context, and the imperial cult was incredibly important for this city and this place. And we're going to learn more as we continue our journey in the city of Ephesus. We are we finding ourselves standing in one of the most important places in the ancient world, specifically the city of Ephesus. We are in the uh, stadium or the place that even great artists like um, Janet Jackson, Sting, and some of those musicians come to perform because of the great acoustics that we have here. But the main interest why we're here is because at one point there was a riot almost happening in the same location when Paul came in. And when he was actually teaching about the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, in which he was um, damaging the uh, merchandising of the idols of the God Diana in this particular town, Artemis. And they took him to this particular place, which could sit 24,000 people. And the acoustics are incredible. And you can really see, now that you're here, how your voice can carry. That's why I'm not talking as loud. And uh, the time that the riot that happened. And when you read in the book of Acts, um, and specifically in chapter 19 of the book of Acts, right? It says, and when these things were accomplished, Paul pursued in the spirit when he had passed through Macedonia and Ag Agnia and uh, go to Jerusalem saying, and then he came into this particular place. In verse 24 says, for a certain man named Demetrius, a silversmith who made silver shrines of Diana, brought no small profit of the, of the craftsmen. You got to remember that in the ancient world, religion and politics was one of the same. You have imperial worship, imperial worship. Uh, and this was one of the most important cities for imperial cult. Uh, it's the temple uh, keepers, actually, in chapter 19, verse 35 and 36. Listen to what it says. It says, and when the city clerk had quieted the crowd, he said, men of Ephesus, what man is there who does not know that the city of, Ephi of the Ephesians is, is the temple guardian of the great goddess Diana and of the image which fell down from Zeus. Now, when you read that when you read that verse, you don't really understand the importance of that expression until you are here. Neokoros. Neokoros is one of the greatest uh, 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 titles that a city can have. And uh, per Pergamum had it, Smyrna had it, and also Ephesus. And having that title represented special gifts and privileges coming from the Roman emperor. So as you can see, it was a not only Paul attacking their belief system in the goddess, but also attacking the benefits that they will get, you know, from the Roman emperor. That meant chaos to the whole city. If there was allegiance to the emperor and there was already a, 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 a treason against the emperor by worshiping another god, other than the commitment they made to the emperor and the worship of Diana, that would have brought a lot of chaos to the city in regards to money, merchandising, and that was the case. We are here in the city of Ephesus. We're seeing to witness where all the events that you see in the book of Acts chapter 19 and what it really means. So continue to join us in our research and our search of the cultural context of the letter to the book of Acts. We are here now in the, in the middle of the theater. And to consider that I'm in the middle of the place where Paul was, and that the people would have been basically sitting where you're looking from. And I'm not talking very loud, and you can hear it all the way up there. Can you imagine 24,000 people worshiping the God great as the goddess Diana? Just like it would be for the Jewish people when we say Adonai Hu Elohim. Just think about the impact of that. Adonai Hu Elohim. Um, if we say it with 20,000 people in this place. You can see the importance of imperial cult, how the loyalty to the God Diana was such because it represented their identity as a community. So it's not just, it's not just a religion. It was their identity. It was the civic duty to defend the integrity of the, the God they worship because it also meant commercial income. Without having the loyalty to Diana, 
they make no money. So this is one of the things that allows us to understand more about first century uh, letters and cultural backgrounds is extremely important for us to understand in order to get a broader perspective of the letters of Paul. And this is only one example. Wow. Can't believe I'm in the location where Paul once was. And this is what the Bible does, brings it alive.